And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Ryan, who during his near-death experience went to the Black Void, which we're going to learn about and more. Ryan, thank you for joining me today and welcome. Thank you for having me. Ryan, let's start on the day that you died and go from there. One day, I think I was around 18 years old, 17 years old. I was uh, just turning, turning 18. And I had a friend that was a really close friend to me, and she had diabetes. And then I used to go over and be able to conversate with her all the time. And uh, it was kind of like my comfort, like uh, like having like a, a opening, like a good friend to mm -hmm. like be able to open up to. And uh I drove her to McDonald's so that she can get a job because she was trying to get out of a bad situation that she was in and she had diabetes. And um, within the first week of work, I uh, got a call. I'm sorry. Uh, a call and uh, somebody told me that she died in her sleep and she didn't even get to make her first paycheck. And it really bothered me for a long time. Yeah. No. Uh, so the only way I could feel at that time, at that age, to uh, feel better was the idea to do substances and try to forget and uh, move on. And uh, so one day, I decided to call up an ex-girlfriend and told her that I just want to die. I don't want to be here no more. And so she came over and she uh, administered some drugs. And I overdosed and fell on the floor. Luckily, she went and uh, did the right thing and told my parents what happened. So I'm laying on the floor, and I don't even know what happened. I just remember falling out of the chair and everything going black. And uh, so my uh, parents, from what they tell me, was they called the ambulance, 911, everything. And uh, when they came and got me and picked me up, put me into the ambulance, I, all I could remember was waking up and they did not know what I took or anything. I just remember sitting up and waking up and saying, I did this drug. And then right after that, I blacked out again. And in between that time of me blacking out again and them administering the medicine to uh, counteract the drugs that I took, it felt I went into this completely, like, completely dark black space. And it was almost like space, but like there was no stars or no light. And it felt like all you could do was, would, is think. And, uh, there's a, it felt like there was no, I don't know how to explain it, like a, it felt like time didn't exist. Like, I was like this, like the thoughts in your head, like the consciousness or thoughts are in your head that you, you know, use it. Would you say it that? Felt like, would you say that you felt like you were just pure consciousness there? That, that's the closest thing that I could probably agree with. Yeah, like uh, it was your thoughts, but you weren't physically there. Your body was not there. Did it feel thick or velvety at all? No, it felt like uh, a sleep. 
even though like it was, a sleep or a dream, like a like almost unreal. Even though it was totally black, do you feel like you could still see, and you were just seeing blackness? Oh, I could see. You could see the blackness. Like you could see. Like look around. I was. I remember just like looking around, and it was just it's just endless, endless darkness. At that time, did you think to yourself, am I dead? I didn't really have much thought while I was in there. It was more like a sleep feeling. Like I was in the most peaceful sleep meditation, like REM sleep state that you could possibly be in. Like, I can't explain the feeling of it. It was like a very enlightening experience for me. And, uh, so when I woke up, I woke up in a hospital bed and all of a sudden I started getting like these like inspirational ideas that I've never even cared to even think about scientific ideas, um, anything from you got to change your ways, kind of like change your ways and help others kind of feeling. And I've never had that feeling day in my life. I was uh, at that time, like a rebel. (laughs) Like uh, I was trying to do everything to go the opposite of the establishment pretty much. And uh, so I had no no feeling of helping others really at that time i was feeling sorry for myself but when i started having these ideas and thoughts i would have these urges where i would draw them out and research every single little piece and bit and write it down and i still have these drawings i don't i don't uh, know if you want to see those or if i should even like be showing stuff like that go ahead um I would also get these, I want to say like premonition kind of things. Like uh, I would be making jokes, like there's no way this is going to happen. And then within a week or two, it's in the news. Like I have no idea what's going on with me. So it's kind of like you could start foretelling the future? I don't want to really like jump to any conclusions with it. I I look at it more as like... uh, like a religious experience kind of feeling, kind of. When you get the idea of something happening in the future, would that idea just pop in your head or would you dream it or something first? It comes as like a a remembering kind of thing, feeling like remembering, uh, seeing a picture, like seeing a picture or a word or a phrase or just anything, like, like anything that, you could use to learn or uh, just any information whatsoever. It would spark like a a memory, like something, like a feeling with inside me, a feeling of like, wow, this is, this is weird. Why do I feel so, uh, so determined to do this? And it's like a deja, I know I told you that it's like a deja vu feeling. Like uh, seeing something and then in your head, you think that you've seen that before kind of feeling, you know? So it sounds like to me that after this experience, it opened you up in some way where you have like these psychic-like abilities. I like the idea of psychic, but for some reason, it does not feel like psychic. It feels more like, uh, I know a lot of people are throwing around the word discernment. It feels more like that, like an obligation and duty to help in any way I can. And I'm poor. I have have not made a dime in 10 years. I'm antisocial. I don't leave the house. All I do is study and help my family that's sick. And that's all I do and focus on other than when I'm getting these feelings and passing them around and helping out 
any any way I can. And I make sure that when I do do this, that I'm posting as my opinion. This is my opinion and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, it's more, it's like a, like a, a sense of duty almost. So you were in the black void and then did you just come back to your body? If not, how did you come back? It's simply just like waking up, waking up from, let's just say, uh, you take a long run, you're working hard all day and you can't, by the end of the day, you just cannot open up your eyes. Have you ever felt that way? Like you're so tired that you can't even open up your eyes. Mm -hmm. And it felt like when I woke up that I was in this really deep, peaceful sleep. And it was like somebody threw water in my face while I was sleeping, just went to sleep. And uh, I remember waking up extremely irritated. Like, uh, like somebody just bothered me real bad like splash water in my face kind of like while I was sleeping and it just felt weird like I was just angry like I remember saying when I woke up in the hospital like feeling like why did you wake me up kind of feeling it was weird it's been weird and it's taken a long time for me to uh be able to talk about that so while you were in the black void you didn't really see any beings or anything or not even a pinpoint light anywhere? No, not, not one being. How long do you feel like you were there for? Honestly, it felt like I was there forever. Kind of. <laughs> like It felt like a feeling of foreverness, like eternal time, like... Like how a year goes by, but it would be like 20, like, like a year going by within 10 minutes, like kind of feeling like it felt like it lasted forever. And as long as I'm there, it was like a lot of time within a short amount of time, if that makes sense. I know you've only seen one of my videos, but sometimes we talk about that the black void is a place that's like a starting point and it's possible that you could start from the black void and leave there and go to other dimensions and realms does that resonate with you at all it kind of does from my experience only because it was like i was out of my body somewhere in the you know and then i was able to wake up so that right there to me affirms everything here yeah, you just said that you, there is a possibility to me that you could possibly do that but i also feel like the void is like a uh a timeout area almost like it felt like hey you were put here to uh think about what you've done and you had all the time in the world almost kind of feeling now that you're back, do you feel like you've been given a second chance at your life? After all my experiences with near-death uh, experiences, I know I told you I had a couple more, but uh, what was really uh, odd to me was I had religious experiences after this. And what, There's what? only been two times that I've ever felt like a religious experience. Can you share those with us? This is where I get like a little bit nervous about talking about it because I do not want to affect anybody's faith whatsoever. Um, so this is going to be like an opinion, but mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what happened without saying who I think it, you know, what I think it is and who I think it is. It just felt like a religious experience to me. Okay. So I was going through this time and between all these near-death experiences it all happened within like four years and um i remember i was uh over at a uh ex my ex-girlfriend's house 
and I was sleeping on this really nasty bed, a mattress on the floor, and I was drinking at the time, and um, struggling with addiction, alcohol addiction, and um, I remember waking up, and I remember having a hole, like a burn, a really big, terrible burn in my leg, and I looked down, I don't even remember how that happened, but I woke up off the bed and there's this window and it was really early in the morning, like around seven, seven thirty, where the sun starts rising. And I remember feeling standing in this light that was shining through the window. It was a perfect day. And I uh was just looking up, just trying to think of like wanting figuring out a way to go home like how to how do i get home from here i'm gonna call a ride and uh, all of a sudden like i felt this warm feeling like almost like a pair of arms wrapping around me and i heard this this is still with me to this day and this voice now i don't hear the voice anymore i heard it this time but it still i guess it's just like yesterday feels like and uh, i heard this this male's voice was a man i don't know who it was i don't know what it was it was not my voice it was not my thoughts and i can clear it clear crystal clear as day it's okay it's time while i was feeling while i had that feeling of warmth like a hug from like a father almost and I remember, I remember calling my dad up right there, and then and the idea just popped in my head, and I never thought I would ever, ever, uh, ever get off alcohol and stuff. But the thought in my head, I called my dad, and I told him, take me to rehab. It's time. And ever since then, I've been off alcohol. That's great. And uh, it's really hard for me to talk about that because it's so real. And uh, I have yet to explain it. Like, uh, I'm trying not to like, tear up or anything, but it really touches me. It feels like yesterday. And it's been 12, over 12 years, 14 years since I've had a drink or did anything. If you had to make a guess, who do you think the voice was that was speaking to you? Now, this is where I like feel uh, a little uncomfortable with talking about it. Well, I I don't know if it's to me. It felt like it felt like it was either Jesus or God. Somebody. It felt like a warm embrace from somebody that you haven't got a hug from in a long time. And that was the feeling I had in my heart. Prior to this, were you already a religious person? Like, did you have a history of going to church? I used to, uh, when I was little, my parents used to take me to church. But then we kind of, like, things happened in the family. My grandpa died, my grandma died. And everybody just started bickering and just kind of, like, we stopped going. Pretty much, but I've never, I didn't, I've never thought about being religious or having any of these experiences happen to me. At that time, I just felt like I was mad at the world. I was confused, sad, angry, and uh, you know, I didn't, I did not have um, any, any religious. Like, we haven't been in church for years. It's all like five, six. All right. So it was really weird to me that all this happened. I wouldn't even be thinking it was weird if I went to church regularly. Can you tell us about your other near-death experiences? All right. <clears throat> so about when I was uh, 20, turning 21, I uh, was still in my drinking phase, trying to dr forget everything. That's how I describe it. I, I, I think people drink to forget. 
and like they're going through a lot of pain in their past and they just don't want to remember it and deal with it. And I think that I was going through this alcohol phase and one day I was driving around and I stopped at my friend's house and I drank some liquor, a lot of it, and I didn't even think about it not eating or anything like that or i shouldn't have even been about driving that's the ultimate that's the ultimate solution <laughs> but um uh, i remember my buddy one of my friends he owed me 60 dollars, and i'm third poor <laughs> so when he said he had that 60 dollars, i don't know it was the stupidest idea ever but i remember getting in the car and gunning it <laughs> like with him still on the phone, I'm sitting there with my phone in my hand and I'm saying, don't, don't do anything. I'm going to be right there. And within, before I could even finish my sentence, I just remember this crash, this like this loud uh, crash. And um, so from what they tell me, Cause I, I mean, I don't know what happened. They had the life flight me and everything from the accident. But from what they said was I uh, blacked out at the wheel. So, and uh, I guess I was going not like, I'm not going to say how fast I was going because I honestly don't know, but my foot got stuck on the gas pedal and I, I hit a uh, light pole and I went across the medium across the other lanes of uh, the road is kind of like a, a like a mini highway kind of thing. Um, and I went across the medium and I went across the other uh, lanes and rolled into a ditch. And uh, luckily, somebody that I knew that was I was close to and knew me, she was an older lady. She kind of was like the mom of the group of our neighborhood. Which was so weird because it was at late at night, and I don't know why that like why she would be there and witness me getting in this accident, crazy accident. But I remember I remember when they put me on the gurney, okay, so when I hit the pole, my head busted through the uh, uh, the driver's side window. And uh, I remember it just feeling like, uh, it just sounded like a, like, a, like a crunching of a car kind of like thing. And then I remember waking like on the gurney, I remember waking up on the gurney and all I could do was I, uh, I this is so weird. I mean, all I could think of, and I guess I was saying this stuff and I was blacked out. I kept saying this over and over again, that I, all I wanted to do with my life was join the military and make my dad proud. And that I love my mom over and over again. I guess it's, it's on video of my accident. I never watched it because it's on a, a site, a really messed up site, drunken jackasses of Ohio and um, I I didn't record it the video or post it on there so I just refused to watch something that paints it in a super negative way uh, um, but I remember waking up going through that same process before, like when I was overdosing it was like the same exact place and same feeling and I guess they even they life flighted me to a hospital, and then I woke up in bed in a hospital bed. So are you saying that you also went to the black void? I believe so. I believe I I highly believe so. Now was this NDE after the previous one that we spoke about or before? Yeah, it was the same feeling. It was the same exact feeling of like I'm supposed to be sitting here thinking about what I did and the wrongs in my life and how I'm going to make them right. And if I, and like, now that I'm older, I remember this feeling of like, if you don't, if you don't change your ways, 
and realize it, you're going to end up in somewhere worse place than this. And it's, uh, it's uh, been very hard to like uh, think about. So I try to uh, get it out there and uh, get off my chest, kind of. Because maybe others are going through this addiction and all this stuff, and they don't have an idea of how to get out of it. Hope that this touches their hearts. And uh, they can do it. Anybody can get off this stuff at, at any time, any place you have the willpower and you have the power, and it's time. It really is. Now that you've cleaned up, do you feel like you have some special purpose in your life that you should be fulfilling? That's funny you say that. Because ever since all these religious experiences, I'm getting this urge, really like strong urge, almost like I was saying, a sense of duty to help out anybody and everybody that I can in the best way that I can. And when I get these uh, deja vu things, feelings, and I have to write down and draw out like scientific inventions and ideas and all this, all this stuff, um, what's going through my head is uh, something like saying, like a feeling almost. It's not really like a saying. It's more like a feeling of like, you need to do this. You need to help and save life, save the children. That all goes through my head. Like when this feeling comes, save the children. And I have no idea why. But I kind of do have an idea of why. <laughs> and I'll explain that to you if you want to hear more about uh, why I think that. Yeah. Let me know. Okay. So 2019. It was right before they announced that COVID was spreading everywhere. All right. I remember waking up in November on 2019. And my entire body and my face and everything was blue and purple. And I remember getting up and making it to my parents' house where they called an ambulance. So I get to the hospital and I remember them bringing me back to a waiting room after I checked in. And I could all I could hear was a kid after kid after kid coming into the ER with the same like symptoms of like coughing. It's nonstop coughing, 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 coughing. And even though I'm so I'm sitting there blue and purple, they're uh, starting to administer oxygen because my uh, oxygen levels were reading 82 which is uh pretty low and um i remember when every single time that the doctors or nurses would come into my room i would get this feeling and something had control of me i i just felt like something was telling me to tell the nurses and doctors to go save the children. I'm okay with my creator. And I remember looking at the clock and this feeling of like peace. Like you felt like peace washing over you, putting you, wrapping you up into a blanket of peace. And that I remember every time they came to this, uh, my room, I would tell them, go. Go save the children. I'm okay with my creator. I'm at peace. And uh, that sticks with me to this day. That drives this feeling I get when I have to write down something. And I feel like I need to look into the science of things and look into the reality of everything. And it's just this feeling of save the children kind of feeling. Like that same feeling, but in, in a stronger like a stronger way, like it carried with me the message almost. When we were emailing each other, you mentioned that when you dream, you go to the black void. Is that correct? Yeah. I, uh, 
Because ever since I went through my near-death experiences and been to the void and came back, I'm not able to dream. I don't remember the dreams. I remember just it just feeling like I felt like just empty blackness. And I don't remember my dreams whatsoever. And uh, after I wake up, I feel that same irritation of like, why did I wake up? Like I was at peace and I was finally sleeping, kind of feeling like irritated. Like, and when I say irritated, I mean like hearing like when I wake up, and we got the news going. My my dad's a huge Democrat, <laughs> so he loves. He's into it. He loves Biden. We, you know, and uh, so he always has the news on. And some of the news, I'm just thinking like, I would get like this feeling like, oh come on, man, you're supposed to do it like this and this and this, and I'd get irritated like, oh, at everything. Like it, it could be anything. Like, but it's mostly irritation at like something so easy in my head that we could do better <laughs> we could definitely do better um that's just uh that's how i wake up every day how can we do better pretty much after this experience is it possible that you started seeing ufos well the ufos kind of ties in before my near-death experiences in what way well before my near-death experiences i seen well, it's kind of like before and after. I have only had two UFO experiences. And the first one was before my near-death experiences. I remember I had to pick up my ex-girlfriend from uh, her work. And it was 2 o'clock in the morning. And I remember I was I was uh, really tired, but I was alert because I had to drive. And I made sure that I was alert. And I remember pulling out onto the main road and then there is this like fiery teardrop kind of orb it was like a teardrop like uh have you ever played mario yeah maybe some of you have. uh it was like um uh, there's this little fire snake that jumps <laughs> and jumps and tries to get you it's like a section of like that like a teardrop fireball but mm -hmm. it was completely silent and it was flying about 10 feet above the power lines. How big? And the way it was going, it was coming straight down the road. And I, I swear, I, I ducked down like it was about to hit me. Like, oh, oh, my God. But then when I looked behind me, there was no word. It was gone. And it was the most surreal experience that actually got me into thinking about ufos i never really cared like i mean i never really like i did care because i like the movies and stuff obviously <laughs> i mean the movies are great but um i never really felt like the wanting to discuss the reality of aliens how big do you think it was well if it was at the top of the uh power lines it was about a football size almost like it was like a football size fiery orb it looked like a teardrop and then you had some other type of ufo experience after your nde this one is going to get scary for a lot of people and this one actually i wasn't going to tell you about because from what i hear and Uf ufology and all all the podcasts and stuff that this type of ufo could be traced down to a certain company and i was really struggling with telling this this one but me and my wife we were standing in the front yard and we're she's just she loves taking pictures of stars of the sky of birds we love doing that this is our, our pastime it's just looking up at the stars and thinking and just seeing what was out there in the world and you know the universe is ours <laughs> we just you know we gotta believe and feel you know <laughs> um i remember she took this picture 
and it was straight up, straight up the tree in our front yard. And within five minutes, we were in the garage five minutes later, and we were looking through our camera pictures. And we see this black triangle. I say it was black, but she says it was kind of like a gray. But it was this triangle, and at each point, there was a light. And as soon as we seen that picture, and we said, hey, what is this? We hear this weird sound. And it sounded like cartoonish almost. Like a high pitch, like a back in the day, how they tried to make UFOs sound and stuff back in the day when it was like, you know, 60s, 70s, alien stuff. Like the cartoonish, like it sounded like a high frequency, but it was like faint. But this frequency, but this frequency, we could tell exactly where it was coming from. Like, where we were standing, we were standing here, we could tell that that exact direct sound was coming right here, like next to it. Like it was coming, we could even tell that it was coming down. That's how direct it was. Now you saw it in the picture. <clears throat> Did you go back out and look in the sky and see it without No, after the we camera? heard the sound, after we heard the sound, there was no way we were going back out in that yard. Because it almost felt like dangerous. Felt like what? Felt dangerous. Oh. Almost like it was trying to, like the feeling of it now, I think of it, it, it felt like it was trying to delete, delete something, like delete the image or delete us. Your wife didn't see the UFO when she took the picture, right? No. That's what the crazy thing was, completely quiet. Do you still have the picture of that? Yeah, but it's on a... Uh, it's on a hard drive on a broken laptop and I do not want to bring it out. And because if there was something, if there was something that wanted to delete it at that time and I started talking about it and showing it, I believe that they will try it again, to be honest. But I could show you, I could, but I wouldn't want to do it on uh in public, like, because it's well, scary. It's a scary situation. Well, I have guests that show their pictures of UFOs. Well, from what I understand, with the whole thing, if you know, with some research, I've heard people talk about black triangles coming from Raytheon. And Raytheon has an office in Huron. Right in between, like, right uh, 40 minutes away from me. Hmm. It's about 40 minutes. I'm not totally sure on how long it takes, but Huron's right by me. I remember we used to drive out to Huron to the lake. All right. So that's, after hearing that, I kind of don't, I uh, kind of just only want to be able to show that if like I'm in a private situation because it was a really scary kind of feeling. And I wouldn't have felt that scared if it wasn't for an experience I had before, uh, like in the middle of my, uh, I think it was in the middle, it was either in the middle of my near-death experiences or before, right before. But I remember going out at night and I was smoking at the time, so. I wanted to hide between the houses with my buddy and smoke. <laughs> and I remember this was the craziest thing to me. Like, it was completely quiet, completely dark. It was nighttime around 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. I still remember that. <laughs> and I remember this like it was yesterday because it was really weird and it drives me to try to learn about UFOs to this day. And um, I just remember smoking with my friend and this camera flash, it was like a camera flash in a circle. I remember I was looking down at the time and it was in a circle. 
and it was a camera flash. And I remember looking straight up and there was nothing. I remember my wife, before she was my wife, she used to love taking pictures. So may I thought maybe she was messing with me or whatever. So I look around the yard, it's 2 30 in the morning, nothing's there. Completely silent. Even like the flash itself is so weird because I could hear the flashing. And I do not know where it came from, what it was. And to this day, I have no idea. Ryan, before we finish up, can you leave us with one last positive message? If anybody is going through any of these things, any of these experiences, types of experiences, it feels really, really good to get it off your chest. If you're struggling, on drugs and alcohol, just know in your heart, in your heart, there's people that love people in this world and will do anything to help. And it's okay. And it's time. Ryan, thank you for your message. And thank you for being my guest. Thank you so much, Jeff. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.